need no Cynthia Cause we bad bitches lie in the Saint Laurent Miss Sting is serving you that Now all the tea and that's that Feel it And I'm gonna give it to you Again and again Again and again Again and again and again Again and again and again You ready for this? Uh, let's go Oh Everything about this and that All of this a matter of fact Turn to me Turn to this I'm the one with the information bitch All the news ready to attack Get to your mind serving like that Around the world right to your living room I'm the one bringing it to you So sit down please take a seat Because you're in for a little treat No need to worry we got you Now listen clear to me Babu I got to see the lip and see Now sit back and listen to me Sit back and listen to me We went to that to that Also known as Chippy Milan. I say for myself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you came and visit and chat for a little bit. Yes. So, um, you know, I want to talk to you about a few current situations that's mm -hmm. been going on and also ask you some questions so you can let the world know, you know, who Chippy is, who yeah. Daniel is, you know. Yeah. So, um, first thing I want to get into is, you know, like last week or week before, I had talked recently about you know about the issues about trans women being killed and things like that. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you what is your, you know, mm -hmm. what is your view on that? Well, I've always felt like our community is full of diversity. But when it comes to inclusiveness of certain individual subculture groups, um, there's, I, I feel there's a certain disconnect. And I feel like you can't scream Black Lives Matters if you don't include Black trans lives as well. And I don't mean those who necessarily always appear as trans either, because there's many females that I'm familiar with who live their daily day life without screaming that I'm trans, I'm trans, I'm trans, but still represent. You understand? And I feel like those are the ones who are on the forefront, is those who can live in passability and, and still fight, even though they may not necessarily have to, because some are privileged enough to say that, I don't have to disclose because of how my outward appearance is. But then other females face certain adversities because of outward appearance. So they feel like, if my sister can't fight for me, why should I? Mm -hmm. So basically you're saying that even though there, um, there are a lot of trans women mm -hmm. in the community, but not all of them are comfortable with saying they are trans. Exactly. But I feel like that also comes with the stigma that comes along with having to disclose saying a chance because there's so many mixed responses to you having to live in your truth. Mm -hmm. Because there are some who fetishize trans females and trans men as well because it's not a one-sided spectrum. It's, du it's dual-sided. And I feel like mm -hmm. even just to say it's dual-sided is kind of unfair because there's a wide spectrum of trans identification. Because there are That's people true. who identify as trans who haven't even undergone any hormone therapy, but feel internalized as if they deserve to be who they want to represent, to match the outside and the end, but may not have the means to do so. Right. That's you true. understand? I mean, because me myself, like you know, I am one of those girls that's just not so quick to be open to say, yes, I'm a trans female. Yes, I'm I'm pro trans. This that and mm -hmm. third. Not saying that I don't care, but I do come from the era where you know um, I came like I'm like the last Mohicans of the girls that it was very important to live in your fish, live in your cunt. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, and basically that's just live under the radar. Right. And you know, we have. We have progressed, evolved, better words to say, is we have evolved into being more understood of who we are, you know, versus, you know, it's just being, we were, we were known as taboo, now we're more upfront. Right. So, um, I feel like it's okay, I mean, it's okay that girls are open now about, you know, who they are, but I don't feel like it's fair to 
you know, attack those who do not feel like they should be as open with right. their, you know, as you know, being as open and saying that they're trans or whatever case may be. And that's where the problem that's where the problem is as far as like where a lot of these girls get murdered is because you know, they're saying that girls are not disclosing or they're exposing men, things like that, or whatever the case may be. I I I don't I don't mean to interject you, but I have a very strong feeling like very strong feelings about the whole disclosing situation because I feel like if I'm not sleeping with you, I don't have to tell you Ooh, what my dream is. That. That's just <laughs> that's my opinion. No, but that, for real. but that comes from me understanding that we cisgender real. men tend to be extremely physically driven, very visual. So nine times out of ten, they're gonna holler at anything that looks pretty, right. and that looks beautiful. They're going to look that. <laughs> But 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 that is sincere admiration mm-hmm. that they do see the outward beauty. But I feel like that is where a lot of the miscommunication comes in because you're not even gonna get, you're not even taking the time to get to know me for me to feel comfortable to tell you that about myself. Right. Just you hollering at me on the street in a situation where we're both strangers. Why would I trust you not to even give you my real phone number? <laughs> right. Okay. You know? So in, in you my now, side, now, yeah, like, I, like, I'll be honest with you. Like, right I feel like. If the conversation is not driven based off of, in my opinion, superficial things, mm-hmm. I feel like that the conversation may have been able to be had, and you, they may not have to feel like they were tricked or. Uh, what, I hate what, what when they say, say tricked I hate, or. I hate when they say something. Yeah, like, like because my my honest opinion is, did you ever ask? Because you know that the world is full of all types of beautiful creatures. And everything that what it looks is not what it seems. And people are walking around with with bling bling around their neck that is from mm-hmm. about, about as glass as these as these cups here. Yeah, you know. Well, so you know, I'm sorry to stutter, but you yeah, know, yeah, because like, but it is kind of like see, and then it's just like it's like a never ending story because then it's like you know when you said oh you know you didn't ask or whatever the case may be it's given like well when guys do ask girls like well I know guys ask me like no she's like what are you trans I'm like excuse me but I <laughs> you know but I, so it's like a catch 22 but, so it's hard like you know I get what you saying like why say? because like I like from earlier like uh-huh. I said I'm like the, I'm probably yeah, the last of the weekends that the key point was to be a woman at all right. times. It was to be under the radar right. and things like that. So it was like when you got that, are you trans stuff like that? It's but, subconsciously it'd be like or the man had think like, oh wait, like he trying to say that he could tell that I was a man or the senator. Not saying that, you know, right. girls don't be come on. Mm-hmm. Which I get what I'm saying. Right. Like, you know, we don't like to be spotted out right. as different. We like to be spotted as that we mm-hmm. are just as much women as the next woman. You know, I'm the new generation is very much like I am trans, hear me roar. But I think that and remember, I'm a cisgender man who identifies as bisexual. But I personally don't feel like how I feel should have to weigh that much of, of, of a difference. And, and and I mean every person has an opinion and everyone's opinion counts. But in hindsight there has to be a distinction when we able to separate and, and understand like where do where do we perpetuate and, and in a sense inflict our own stereotypes on ourselves because automatically you assume about him asking you to trans is a bad thing. How do you know if he was to say that you were cisgender, he would not be interested? <laughs> Right, I know so that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's like, it's like, yeah, exactly. So I feel like there's also an internalized stigma that we place on ourselves because we automatically think that it's tea. Oh, if someone thinks someone has trans experience, when the reality is, ah, oh, it's not tea. It's what you like. It's there's there's no shame, and I feel like that comes with position shaming, that comes with bottom shaming, that comes with drug abuse shaming, that comes with any stigma that comes along with having to feel isolated. Right. And feel like whatever that you're going through is as abnormal, or something's mm-hmm. wrong with you, and that comes in a long host of even mental health. There's so many different things that in our community we face, but we ignore and we pick, we pick and choose what we feel the strongest about based off of what is most socially accepted. Right. And I feel like when we go and we state the the unpopular opinion, we face ridicule. We put ourselves at place for ridicule because we're not the popular opinion. And oftentimes, 
acceptance is very important. Right. Because when you don't feel like you belong, who's going to fight for you? True. See, it is like you were just going right into the next question. I was going to ask you. Those. How many of you see where you looked at my car? I was reading your brain. Okay. I mean, he was doing okay. doing sign language. Okay. But, that just makes it that okay so the next question i was gonna ask you like you know um they are bringing up a lot lately more about mental health you know um associated in the black community yeah. and there's been a whole lot of black lives mental now. health in the black community what what's that i don't know right and it's like it's like we've been shedding light on um, it's been a lot of um a lot of onion layers has been peeled right. since the whole black lives uh, matter movement so you know i want to just shem talk to me you know tell me about how you feel about that how you feel about you know all these innocent people being killed you know, do you feel like um, we're being pointed out or we're finally being recognized? Because, you know, I like like from earlier with a lot of trans women being killed and things like that or whatever, you know, the one can say that, you know, this we're being attacked, this needs to stop, and the other side can say, well, women been getting killed, period. Black women been getting killed, period. Being and found with no organs in their body and you're it's just true, now though. really starting to talk about it. So, you know, I feel like, like I feel like it's true though. I feel like there's a lot of murder in general. But I feel like media itself is controlled by people who aren't always, in my opinion, the most in tune with the realities that people live in circumstances on a daily basis, not based off of what's the breaking news of the moment. Because if we realize like since the pandemic has happened, it's almost like no murders happened, mm -hmm. no crime has happened because all I hear is about is masks and Lysol and microderm and they, no microband. Excuse me, I said microderm. Like, that's what mm -hmm. you're saying. I know. Like, <laughs> <I heard laughs> <you> microderm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, microderm. You know, all right. You know, right. Okay. Okay. That's, that's the disinfectant. But what I'm saying is, it's just it's we're being flooded with information that unfortunately is controlled by people who may or may not be always in support of what we feel is most important. Okay, so you're on you're on um, Professor X side because you know it's you know it's very it's always two sides to everything, you mm -hmm. know. So you're on Professor X side yeah. with saying that, you know, it's finally showed in life yeah. what's been what's been going on to Absolutely. us. Absolutely. I'm on the Magneto side, and I'm saying, you know, we're under attack. Not literally, I'm feel, just saying. Like, I you know feel saying? like our, I feel like our, our whole, and I have to say this because it's a wide spectrum of what it means to be black, and I feel like there's a disconnect with some of our brown and black sisters when it comes to identifying as that. Mm -hmm. um, so... There's so many, like you said, it's an onion. There's so many layers and facets to it because you can't ignore some and expect to be treated as one. Right. And I feel like that is the biggest obstacle that we're facing is that crab in the barrel mentality that we have been conditioned generationally. Mm -hmm. And I feel like mental health plays a big part in that too because if you're weak-minded, the internalization of that, that word, weak, creates so much fear and trauma for so many black men because not being strong used to mean death as a slave. Mm -hmm. So we perpetuate that kind of superfluous ideology that stems from past histories dated far before any of us we even thought about. Like we were not brought here on a cruise ship. We were brought here in chains. We were brought here as property, stacked above one another using a bathroom on each other with no medical attention, you got sick, you died. There was no empathy or sympathy for anyone of, of color experience, and that includes Dominicans, and that includes Panamanians, that includes Hondurians, that includes Cubans, that includes Puerto Ricans, and, I, and it, it hurts me sometimes from that- new flash, we're all black. <laughs> <laughs> but, even, even, but, but even with the, the inability to internalize that word, I comprehend it because part of my family is Afro-Latino. My family's from Cuba as well. I'm Jamaican and Cuban. 
I'm Panamanian the same shit. See, so uh-huh. we understand the distinction of having to disconnect being a free slave and being someone of Caribbean experience. They do not want to be considered a free slave. And their head, their whole lineage comes from that island. Yeah, but <laughs> I agree with you with that because yeah. you know what? I did used to say when I was younger, like, you know what they would say oh, you know, your ancestors were slaves, stuff mm-hmm. like that. I'm like, well, my family, right. there's no slaves in my family. Right. My, my family, right. like, you know, they just came to this country mm-hmm. in the side of third. And, like, I say that a lot. And some of be like, girl, what? Like, girl, you been brainwashed? I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> you know, like, no, it's just that my family don't come from that. And, like, I have, um, I have German in my family, too. Mm-hmm. So, I, you know what I mean? Like, of course, I was like, oh, child, we ain't no, no damn slaves. But, like, doing... <laughs> Being that I've been more awake, mm-hmm. or more, you know what I'm saying, I've been more awoken, I've been like doing what, looking at, you know, find out more about history, the right history, instead of the white history, you know, Shay, you know, I did find out that there's, that we were dropped off in different places, you know, like people that were, um, like Spanish. Is le- the the language Spanish come from Spain? Yeah. It's not the European country, right? Does. Exactly. We, we speak French. Spanish. Yeah, all of us. Yes. We speak Spanish. We speak French. We speak Portuguese because we were enslaved by those owners from those countries. It does not mean that we are them. We were a part of them because they raped. Unfortunately, that was a part of conquer was rape and enslave, mm. brainwash. Don't be no fool though. Some was willing. Some, yeah, but 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 out of fear of me. But now, out listen, of fear. my baby would be working in the house. She would not be out here this fear. Yeah, but, that, but you see that. But you see that's out of fear. You see, that's right, out, out of fear. fear. Of treatment, but out of right. Because light is considered right. right because colorism stems deepest in our in our culture because it meant where you would be placed. It meant where you'd be in the house in comfort or on the field sweating in the hot sun every day, no breaks, no water, mm-hmm. fingers burning every single day without a care. You get hurt, you pass out, next slave up. Bye. Mm-hmm. And it's like we don't understand how much we, we enforce that. And even with the with the term good hair and even with the term like, you know, like, oh you're pretty for a dark skinned girl or a dark skinned boy. There's so many things that come with that. There's so much pain that gets internalized when you make people feel less than 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 thou because of the appearance of the coloration of your skin. And honestly, from a scientific standpoint, melanin is good for your skin. It keeps a lot of UV rays and a lot of cancerous, like like UV rays, yes. like exposure from the sun, it, mm-hmm. it helps to filter it. Yeah. So like, I, I, would, I would hate to say this, but if I'm gonna be in somewhere tropical, especially, I need the color of my skin. So when we think categories, because I don't think anyone that looks like us Made up these categories. Right. I, I love my skin. I think I have the best complexion because I go light in the winter, go you know get a nice shade of brown in the summer. Yeah, but, but, but think about it. <laughs> Did we name ourselves black? No, we didn't. Right? <laughs> no, we didn't actually. Right. Hello. Right. Mm-hmm. So I feel like there's so many layers to why things have been placed in. And you know why? In a categorized by hierarchy subsystem that is not designed for people who are not of certain cultures or certain, you know, groups, mm-hmm. racial groups, won't, won't prosper because they don't have that privilege of that particular group. Now, I can honestly say this every racial group has its own sense of privilege. Mm. They do. Because unfortunately, I can I can say this from a place of experience. People of color feel like we can't be racist because we have been so oppressed, but we don't realize that we're racist against ourselves. Mm-hmm. Worse and than anyone else. There is such else. thing. PSA. There is such thing as a racist black person. Yes. Okay. I, if you talk about you, you know you talk about the nail lady. <laughs> In a place, you're racist. If you talk, you know, you say anything. Yeah, but this. I mean, but, the, we can say all kind of racial slurs right yeah, now, but, but we're, we're not. So yes, we all got time for that. We got time to be arguing with y'all about <laughs> what, what I'm just saying when somebody said. <laughs> but, but I, I honestly can say we feel 
so comfortable as people of color mm -hmm. to identify other people's color. But we want people to be so sensitive when mentioning our mm -hmm. So in certain senses, I, I, I think it's kind of double-edged sword when people say Black Lives Matters, but be so quick to say, my sister, you look just like chocolate. Why are you fetishizing my, our queens to be food? You want to eat? You want to eat them? Well, you think about chocolate, you think about... But yeah, I, I but think that's... Got, but you see, who started that? We didn't... I'm sorry, I, I can't... I mean, you think... It's a fetishized thing. Like, I just feel like when you put food, there's always some kind of sexualized fetishism that comes along with it. You I'm so sorry. Better think do of it. cherries. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. I'm serious. Think of, think of, think of cherries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Popping cherries. Dripping with the water. Uh -huh. uh -huh. You know, <laughs> catch him. You know, so it's always he like. He did say. <laughs> ah, so silly. So silly. But you know, I just, you know, I usually don't even talk about my sexuality often, but, you know, I just, I just disclose that as a case I in point. I think that of, is really nice. Yeah, though. no, but I said that I mean, as a case in point that there is so many superfluous stereotypes. Stereotypes, uh huh. Yeah, because people say, especially in the African American community. Once you like, if you're male, once you like boys, you're no longer allowed to like girls. And if you do, you pretend. Mm -hmm. That's you know what? I have so much to say about that. Like I actually think I'm gonna do like another video about that because that's something that yeah we yeah, really yeah. Need we'll see that we'll bottle yeah we really need to break through with that because yeah. that is like for real because I didn't know that when you had to I was like oh okay yeah. people would be like see <laughs> 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 so down like you know so um you know I want this to lead me into that's something else I want to talk to you about is um you know you are you know one of to me in my eyes because like I told you when I first met you that I actually was like a group like I used to live for you I mean not used to because I still live for you as a person live for you more as a person than just you know what I'm saying what you have done you understand what I'm saying but before I knew you I just was like oh my god I like him <laughs> you know you know like you have done twists you have yes. done runway you have yes. done you know you have oh, done that's so funny. fashion it's, like I'm completely I, I just was mm -hmm. recently deemed Legend in ballroom. Recently? Well, I mean, January. You I, better do it, ballroom. <laughs> I mean, okay, let's clear that. She's only saying that because I've been in ballroom for quite some time. I say I arrived on ballroom. Like, I became a household name. When I say household name, I mean, like, other houses knew my name. And I wouldn't say, like, I was, like, every Tom, Dick, and Harry is talking about me. No, I would just say, like, house. Household name as far as Barbara is concerned, because you know the name of the the, the group. You made your name. The girls know your name. Thank That's you. it. Period. Thank uh huh. You. So I, I would say around two thousand and six, I stepped on, and by two thousand and eight, I was winning of the years in different states and travels. Mm -hmm. I was a Chanel at this point. And no one knows my history. I don't mean why now, but I started as a Chanel, and um, I started as All American Runway. Oh, and wow. yeah, cause I was I, share I was, with the people. Well, I was, yeah, I was I was part of Chanel, which has a huge runway legacy. Mm -hmm. um, so for many names like Japan Chanel at yes. that point, I love him. Corey Chanel at that point. Just Corey, Corey, at least Corey. and I know he's a uh, he is a love in. So no shade to love in, but for a while I was stuck Corey with Chanel. Corey, Corey Chanel, Chanel because he was slaying like that. Right. But he as was. a as a Chanel, that's the standard you have to look up to. Mm -hmm. You're going to. I have members from my house that were Chanel as well. And in no shade, your house is eating it as well. I love the same arms. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, <laughs> I love it. Absolutely. My so members. you know, all having been said though, like. It looks like you took a hiatus. Uh, how come you took a hiatus? Did, okay, so let's let's give a little timeline as to how this whole occurrence of me taking about thirteen years to get legend <laughs> pop that long. Um, but I can honestly say life got in the way. I was in a bad way. Or no, no, no. I, I can honestly say it's just in a direction that God had planned for me that I didn't see for myself. Um, many didn't know, but during. Most of my ballroom career, I was going to college and I was doing school and I went to graduate school and, you know, I, I did a lot of different things as far as my education was concerned, but I was still very active in ballroom. But what I didn't progress that, that far in was what I always had the hugest passion when I was dance. 
So once I got an opportunity to kind of go to DC, so I moved to DC for a few years as well, and I was dancing um, in Washington, DC. I was um, teaching at the Dance Institute of Washington. Oh, um, nice. Fabian Barnes, who's one of the principal dancers. So you've been a teacher for a while. Yeah. Okay. Long enough to say. That's what's up. <laughs> no, that's really what's up. That's good. But um, yeah, so. Um, but in my dancing professionally, I had two injuries, and I broke both of my feet two different years, and <gasps> both times took about a year to rehabilitate, and then even after that, you have to relearn how to like move again. You gotta readjust. I had a non-weight bearing fracture, so with that being said, like I couldn't stand on my feet. Like I had to be off my feet for the entire process of the healing until I got physical therapy when I was able to walk with the boot and stuff. But it was tough, and as a dancer, and as a, especially as a vulgar, um, your feet is kind of what you land on. Right. So you, you have to, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, mind you, the part of the foot that I broke was like the outermost um, bone. So imagine like your pinky, uh, like your pinky toe, uh, like the side of your foot, it basically snaps. So every time you step down, the, the fracture basically will open back up. Mm. So I, I, one time my doctor told me that it would heal quicker than it would, they put me back on my feet sooner and it refractured. So that was another thing, like I got re injured on one of the injuries. Oh, yeah. So I was thinking it was like a long history of me getting injured and then trying to rehabilitate and then coming back to ballroom and seeing like so many changes, like within like a four year span. And I kind of was like, who's this? Who's this? Who's this? Who's this? Not intimidated, mm -hmm. but kind of like the style kind of changed on me. Okay. And I've always been a chameleon, so that I was never intimidated that I couldn't keep up. But I almost felt like out of touch. Like I felt like there's a disconnect between that's me the and difference. Mom. Yeah, feeling you know, feeling like out of being out of touch versus um, gosh, with the other what was that feeling like out of touch versus feeling that you can't you know evolve within that. It's, it's totally different. Like yes, totally yeah, different. Like, so, yeah, I didn't feel like like I didn't feel like I had a virus block. I just felt like like I felt middle class like i wasn't quite old school but i wasn't definitely not new right. so i felt like i was in that plateau to where it was like it's only excuse me okay. just oh she has organic juice guys it's strawberry peach yes it's delicious i know i Thank did you. it my, uh, i did it myself <laughs> <laughs> they were like all right <laughs> You better do it. You better do it. You better do it, guy. Okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, like I had like a little disconnect because I, I didn't feel like I knew where I fit. Like I knew that I like I said, oh, excuse me. I knew that I wasn't quite like I said I wasn't new at all. So like the kids that was in basically that came out mm -hmm. in the time that I was gone were doing their thing, mm -hmm. and it wasn't like I said it wasn't that I was intimidated, but I just felt like. They weren't my peers anymore. Right. Like I felt like I got to a certain level where I wasn't quite a wooden legend, but I definitely like I guess I felt like I was like a statement deluxe. Well, I was, <laughs> well, I would say like you know like what I had liked so much about your performance is that it was first of all it was definitely original. You didn't right. remind me of anybody, oh, wow. and then your style. Yeah. You know, you had like a very like um, gothic look yes. to yourself, yes. and I thought that was really cool because mm -hmm. it's not a lot of people of color mm -hmm. that you know tap into that. Yeah, tap into that, tap into that look. That so to see, you. yeah, so to see you do that, I was just, I was just like, that's that was like, oh wow, you know, yeah. like I always really like you was wearing uh, what do they call that um, straps? What do they call them? Harness. Harness, you was wearing harnesses before harnesses. Yeah, was it was really good. But you know what? I've always been in fashion. That's how I ended up being a fashion designer. Like, that'll chime into that portion. Like, of, yes. of, of me. Say what you say. Um, <laughs> Daniel Watson is my design name. Um, but I'm the creative director for Sons of David in New York. And I am very, very. Yes. Oh, sorry. It's all right. Uh, 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 you know what? Ask your question. You know, I have <laughs> Oh my gosh, no, damn, because I really like what you was, okay, so, talking about, like, you know, talking about, like, how I liked your fashion and stuff like that, and, um, what's your category, you know, uh, which is, uh, was mainly for a twister, Yes. you know, um, 
your design is called, I mean, your designer name is, is Sons of David, yes, right? Yes, that's the name of the label, Sons of David in New York. And we started, well, okay, it's a funny story about that. I got the idea from my dad, who's on with us, rest in peace, probably. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But um, it was an idea that I got from him. Um, and that's how we came up with the name Sons of David. So the name came from me and my brothers. So my my mom has three boys. I have sisters too, but my mom only gave birth to three. Mm-hmm. And she has three boys. And growing up, um, my dad used to wear the Star of David. My mom used to wear a cross in the Star of David. Mm-hmm. And growing up, people like mom got us a cross and stuff too. But then as we got to about 13, my dad bought us all Star of David. Who used to think it was Jewish. Mm-hmm. And I used to have to explain, like, no, we're Rastafari. Everyone was familiar with that. But bottom line, we also practice that religion. But it's based in Jamaica. Um, and it's a very holistic religion. Like, it's it's a lot about being organic and having cleansings of the bodies. And just, mm-hmm. yeah, everything you put on your body, you should be able to eat. So that they don't what? use any products with no chemicals. Yeah, no. Mm-hmm. No red meat. They used to meat, eat meat at all. A lot of them are either vegan or vegetarian. Some are pescatarians. My dad was pescatarian for a little bit, but well, you know, thanks for like breaking it down what a restifying is. Because yeah. I thought that was just like a super dread. Yeah, no, no. See, you know, I mean, super, like but even meat, with the meat, meat yeah, yeah, but you see, even with that, like there is uh, or like a true Jamaican. Yes, like, there's like there's like a there's like a a stigma that comes along with the word dread. Now, the term was always lots. But when slavery kind of came across, when, you know, a lot of the white settlers, um, they saw their hair, they thought it was dreadful. So that's how they abbreviated it to be dreadlocks. It was dreadful ones. Um. Yeah, so I, I don't try to be a stickler and like correct people all the time when they say it, but if I get an opportunity, I do like to like bring that up. Mm-hmm. Because if you come across someone who really is by practices, if you say that, they make you look like them. Say dreadlocks. The, they say locks. But but you wouldn't know that. I mean, because I'm not sure if you. You just now yeah, yeah, broke it down. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Is. Like, and I bet you a lot of the viewers here they're gonna be like, "Wow, yeah. right? Do you think that was all like people <laughs> Jamaican, right? right? You know, that's, right. That's, that's what I thought. So when when I became when I, about 2012, my dad gave me the idea for the clothing line, mm-hmm. and then um, I didn't quite know what to do with it. And I kind of was fumbling around with it for a little bit, just kind of like just playing around with like t-shirts, just making stuff like for myself, just to go out to the club. And then I think around 2015, that 16, yeah, so to get more serious, I actually got a business partner. His name is Sequan Lee. Um, he's a celebrity stylist, and his work is amazing. Um, and I really appreciate how he elevated my brand because he brought a sense of styling to my aesthetic which has always been extremely driven by rock and roll music extremely driven by punk and goth culture extremely driven by the downtown new york city lifestyle culture in general just i've always been more influenced by some may say a darker style (laughs) but um i've always been really heavy into music and not just any one style of music. And like even now, like even though I'm really into music, I love like alternative versions of really popular songs. Like I love covers. Like cover music is like my favorite. So when I think of my collections, what kind? cover music, like like a person cover. singing someone else's music. Okay. So like someone okay. singing like a Blink One Eighty Two song mm-hmm. on a rap beat, I think would be awesome. Mm-hmm. Or like singing like Ella Fitzgerald on some kind of like Jasmine Sullivan sounding kind of hip hop mix with R and B kind of sound. Like I love stuff. I love mashups because I'm not like one faceted so my designs aren't. So there'll be like a shoulder missing here, a strap here that buckles down here, it hooks it around, sits and snaps up the back. Yes, <laughs> yo, we gotta watch that together like it's a like movie. You don't think it <laughs> I'm not <it's> like <laughs> But um, I definitely am planning to try to find new ways to 
how to be creative. This pandemic kind of everybody kind of like top. Yeah, like thing. that's something that I want to definitely, and that's something else because you know this COVID nineteen has affected a lot of people in many ways and one some ways that everybody can say like oh i'm not working as much right. or i have lost people and things like that but you know that's you know everybody's situation is different like with me it stopped me a lot from traveling you know i and plus i just started my you know my um my you know open i just burnt my production company right. you know heavily angels barroom productions so you know I had all these ideas that I was going to go to this place, talk to this person, talk to that person, go here, go there. And when this pandemic happened, it just froze all that up. Yeah. So, you know, I wanted to ask you, how's it, how has it affected you? Um, I mean, and you know, what? also it's a little remix to it. Wow. How has it also, um, what was the good, I, I can't think of the word right now, but what was like, what was the good things you, you, you know, how was, what's the good effects, what was the good what? effects from it? I mean, I'm I'm a natural optimist. So when someone's like, I don't have this, I don't have that, I'm like, all right, well, what do you have? And they're right. like, well, I got this, I have this, I have. I said, well, that's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's me, you know. So I have taken the time to be more creative in the sense of I've given a lot more detail to my collections that I probably wouldn't have because I wouldn't have the time to. And like still being a cut and sew design that still makes like their own samples and stuff like that. You know, I do outsource certain things. Majority of things that is produced by my brand is produced, you know, cut and sew by either myself or a member of my team. Mm. So it's it's a struggle because you can't all be together. And a lot of things that was done was multi like step. Mm -hmm. So like like I would make the garment, then the printer would get it, then the tag me tagging what happened after that then you know the packaging would come after so it's like four or five steps to even get the package ready to, like a piece ready to even be sold so it's difficult to, to only get one or two steps down when three four and five or mm -hmm. not operating because pandemic right so i can honestly say that it's it's helped me figure out how to utilize the time that i have to be prepared to have to hustle and bustle when it opens back up. Everyone's gonna be trying to generate all the money that they may or may not have lost because people are not as open to getting stuff shipped to them. People aren't as open to purchasing things because they're not knowing when they get shipped to them. I mean, especially for one of the biggest problems have been for me as far as like when it comes to shopping and things like that is definitely like the online thing like i usually would go online if i was looking for something spe specific mm -hmm. you know but just going shopping i really enjoyed more going into stores, stores and, and picking things out yeah. yeah so that has definitely been a problem for me right i feel like i do miss do i miss it i think i miss it i think i miss like dining in somewhere Especially because it's so hot. Uh -huh. Like, it's summer right now in New York City. Like, it's humid and smoldering. It plays no games. Mm -hmm. So, like, right now, like, being outside is it's painful. It's like the movie, Do the Right Thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's painful. No, it is. It's truly painful. And, and sometimes you try to remember, like, if I go outside, it's going to be hot. But being inside all day drives you crazy. So you take a chance and you go outside and then it reminds you of, why are you staying inside? Yeah. It's so hot and muggy. So like um like um I miss the AC of restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> I miss I, go I miss going out to events. Yeah, I miss that too. I'm not a person that's big on going to clubs and shit like that, but I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm more on going to events. Because I mean shit, I've been going to clubs since I was yeah, like fifteen I mean, years old. Actually it's basically canceled. Like yeah. Virtual, everything is going to have to be done. Like, I mean, me personally. Are you ready for I, that? Mm, I'm I have no choice but to be. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's kind of given like, uh, damn if you do, damn if you don't. Well, I feel but, like a lot of it comes down to having to alter how you normally would orchestrate your productions. It's the formula is collections sent out, made. Returned, 
fittings with the models of whomever you choose to be a fit models. Mm -hmm. And you have your casting after you see that the stuff fits. You have your casting. The casting director does that part for you. You don't have to do that. A lot of casting directors are not even like working at this particular moment because they would have to kind of be it, around too many people. Like casting is going to have like hundreds of models that come. So mm -hmm. casting directors are going to be exposed to hundreds. Mm -hmm. So a lot of casting directors are not taking that risk right now. So it's like, have to find your models now. You have to find your models? You have to find your models. Oh, see, check it out. All the people that's been trying to, you know, trying to be a model for so long oh. and feel like, you know, that they was looked over, now's your chance. Get <laughs> out here because the designers are just looking for girls now. Well, we are. Girls and guys are just looking we for We are girls. because we, we, need, we need bodies, but we need bodies that are up to date. Not even just that, like, like me personally, my my brand is driven by like unisex, like GNC style. Like a, a, a man can wear it or a woman can wear it mm -hmm. or someone that's too spirited, too spirited, excuse me. Mm -hmm. It's just, to me, it's just a vibe. And if you're with the vibe, you can feel the vibe and you can rock the clothes. This is a vibe. And I don't feel like it's spe specified for any particular genre of people. I feel like it's for anyone that wants to be someone mm -hmm. have that have that feeling of that clothes that makes you feel like you are someone you're making a statement mm -hmm. with whatever you're wearing and you're living in that moment of your true statement mm -hmm. so that's what i kind of like have been trying to trying to implement is like time management and taking the time to be more creative and do things that take more detail because it's time consuming um and also keeping keeping new ways to market and keeping those keeping those product shots and things keep going because people are still interested in seeing this not ready to purchase right yet. So it's, it's a little bit of a struggle. But I can say that I've I've gained so much um, as far as the pieces itself are gorgeous for this collection. Mm -hmm. And I think that because it was me in this time, I just gave it my all. And I feel like it's gonna show and prove when it's time for someone to see. It's definitely gonna have a story. Oh, yeah, it's definitely gonna be double, double. Because that was like that's like the, because I I love fashion too. Yes. You know, I'm, <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> but I, I'm like, I've I've my take into fashion because I always loved, I loved when somebody has said this to me a long time ago, and it always stuck to me, and I go by it. It says you know they say dress how you feel. Yes. So it went for me, for me hearing that to like when I was watching like when I watched like fashion shows or just even just me just like seeing somebody walking on the street or on the train or whatever, mm -hmm. and if they're dressed not like everyone else, mm -hmm. I'd be like, oh well, they feel like this or they yes. feel like that, right? So you know, it's a character that comes with it. Exactly. So you know, and and like watching um watching like like watching runway fashion shows and stuff yeah. like that, and but seeing like. The way the clothes come out, yes. I was like, I knew from the jump that it was telling the story. Yes, absolutely. And I feel like you know so, who really. I'm sorry. No, go, go, go. The one, the one designer that really, well, my favorite fashion designer is the real Fidelity. He's like my top. One of the greats. Yes, I still haven't had any of his pieces. I don't have everybody else's piece. He's the only person, <laughs> but I think because in my brain I said I wanted him to like custom make, make you something for me. You know I'm very Little Kim, you did it. You did it to me, you know what I'm saying? It's because of you that I want everything custom made. But um Yes. And what happened down. Yes. And um Speaking but, Okay. Mm -hmm. Um I would like him, Alexander McQueen. Like Alexander McQueen, like I was very intrigued by him because I would always wonder why he would have like these models of like Bob Wire looking stuff yeah, aliens it was like very, it was very you know very so i really that's what made me start to get into the, the theatrics, story yeah the yes. theatrics of it I, i've always admired so i can't wait to see the sons of david story ah that's what so i look forward to that i definitely do me too and yeah. i can't wait to show you guys the creative way i decided to show because it's not going to be conventional it's going to be a little bit outlandish, but I think those who like art will truly, truly appreciate it. Mm -hmm. So, 
I am almost done with my organic juice. Is that you were almost done? Yes. Oh. It, it, it was such a pleasure. Thank, well, thank you. you for having me. Hopefully, this will be the last one to you. Of course not. We have to have an update. Right. Definitely. So thank you. Yes, and look at a restaurant. Because <laughs> <laughs> you want to eat with AC, that's your way, right? <laughs>